Who are you? Dee Dee from Dum Dum Girls. <laughs> the Dum Dum Girls, I have a quote for you. Okay. Here it is. Quote, everything I have fits in a trunk. I do not record for popularity. I do it for myself only because it's my life. That's a great quote. Now, who might have said that? I don't know. I mean, it it sounds like something I might say. <laughs> I have a gift for you from the person that said that, Gigi Allen. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. What can you tell the people about Gigi Allen and Dee Dee and the Dum Dum Girls? And don't you just love not for sale to persons under 18 years of age? Yeah, that's great. And I'm giving it to you. Wow, thank you. That's. Uh, I wish we had a record player in our van, but we only have a... Uh, DVD player. We could always melt it for an ashtray. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take it home. Thank you. Yeah, what is the connection? Dum Dum Girls, Gigi Allen. What can you tell the people about that? Um, I mean, I one of my favorite things to do when I have a lot of time on my hands is to cover songs that I love. So that was why I covered um, that particular Jabber song. Um, you know, to me, that was maybe one of the more obvious songs that could translate to, you know, a a poppier, harmony-heavy girl group version of it, so. Well, now that I've given you this record, what do you think about Sleeping In My Piss as a possible <laughs> cover for the Dum Dum Girls? <laughs> I, I tried to keep the, the cover we did, you know, a little, a little earlier <laughs> on in terms of the song titles. Maybe, would that be a fantasy for Dum Dum Girls fans, Sleeping In My Piss? Uh, maybe we would do uh, I Wanna Kill You or... That's the way you're censoring the album songs. Last in line for the gangbang. <laughs> you love the covers, don't you, Dee Dee? I love co Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I love music, and so I definitely spend a lot of time writing my own, but I listen to a lot of music, and probably once a day I have some, you know, stupid idea like, oh, shoot, we should totally cover this song because it's you know the most perfect song and sometimes that's a good idea sometimes it's a bad idea but it's always fun to try it one of the great songs that you do is the rolling stones a brian jones era rolling stones yeah, <laughs> yeah my uh my preference for rolling stones era um play with fire yeah we'll play that tonight um we love playing that song yeah now, Brian Jones didn't write that song. However, he wore very nice pants when that f song was performed. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the music that happened while he was affiliated with the band is a little more in tune with, with me. Do you love the Brian Jones pants? Do you know what I'm talking about? He had the best pants. <laughs> he had good overall style, I thought. Like those striped pants. And it made me think, where did you get your tights, your pants? You're not wearing them now, now, but those, those, those pants. Yeah, um, I picked them up at a store in New York. Um, and I wore them at our first show. And I saw some pictures from the first show. And they had such a, you know, they were captured so well. Dee Dee, you are connected. The Dum Dum Girls are connected to Tom Hanks. <laughs> Pray tell. How? <laughs> well, Tom Hanks was in the movie Bachelor. Okay. Bachelor Party. Okay. And the band The Flesh Tones were on the soundtrack of Bachelor Party. And if we turn the record over, who do we see that produced The Flesh Tones? <laughs> yeah, Richard. Richard Gott Goderer. Goderer. What can you tell the people about Richard Goderer? Did he talk about the Bachelor Party soundtrack with the Flesh Tones? This is an amazing song, American Beat, 84. He, I, hanging out with him is unbelievable. He has like an endless amount of stories. We haven't even approached this era yet. Um, the Flesh Tones, you got to get into the Flesh Tones. <laughs> yeah, the, the last time... I saw him, the first time I saw him, we talked exclusively about the Strange Loves, uh, which he was in. So that, that was uh, the interesting angle there. Um, the last time I spent significant time with him was in Paris at his 70th birthday party, and Seymour Stein was there. So we talked a lot 
Oh, the Von Bondies. <laughs> no, about Sire Records. <laughs> Seymour signed the. He d yeah, he did, did he? He got to record on a yacht. The, that's amazing. Have you visited that yacht, Jerry Harrison's yacht? No, no. And I was thinking, perhaps you need some more covers added to your repertoire. So I brought along another gift for you, Dee Dee, and I hope you don't have this one. The Girls and Garage Volume 11. I do not have any of these on vinyl. My husband lost the ones we did have so that is awesome i have it I, well, I don't have this volume i have the first volume on my ipod so what thank you, you. Tell, oh, no problem what can you tell the people girls in garage the volumes like there's tons of different volumes so many i mean i have a i actually have saved on my laptop a website that breaks down every single track from every single version lp versus cd so if I'm ever in the mood to listen to any of them, I can just go find all the songs on YouTube. So it's a really handy, poorly designed website. Yum, yum, tree. <laughs> and yum, and yum. Oh, right up your ass, totally. <laughs> right up your ass, right in the Gigi Allen sort of theme. And if we turn over, a few girls in the band too. Uh huh. They were great from New York, mid 90s. They played ABC No Rio, that punk venue in New York quite a bit. I will gladly check them out. And this is Yum Yum Tree. No, they played ABC No Rio, and it's kind of like The Smell in Los Angeles. And you went from, I think, playing The Smell to playing like Radio City with MGMT. That's one hell of a change, isn't it? What was that like? <laughs> um, it's, it's weird. We... You're like the only band in the world, you think, that went from The Smell to Radio City in one year? No, I mean, it, it just depends. I mean, you it was amazing to play in such a historic, beautiful theater, but, I mean, I'll be honest, there were, you know, maybe a fifth of the capacity there by the time we played, and I don't know if any of them liked us, so. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd take playing a small club with people that are obviously enjoying the music over a big, historic, empty board club any day. <laughs> Anything else you want to add to the people out there at all, Dee Dee? Um, just a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks for the gifts, and we're excited to play tonight. Why should people care about the Dum Dum Girls, Dee Dee? Why should people care? Um, I mean, if they enjoy the music, and they enjoy what what words I'm putting out there, then, you know, that's great. I... I do this for myself, and I I hope that people can find uh, something from from what I'm putting out there. But you know, I don't make any promises really. But I think that I think that uh, we have something fun and meaningful, and we like to go out and share it. So, well, thanks so much for your time, Dee Dee of Dum Dum Girls. Keep on rocking in the free world, and do do the loot do. <laughs> do do. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> What's the time limit on this?